A lot of people understand at this point that it's not the best idea to position your business as like a one-stop shop for web design and digital marketing services because you end up with kind of low ticket, kind of uh, short-term one-off projects. And it's better to shift more towards results and outcomes for the clients. But some people have said, hey, Lee, I've been watching the videos and I've been trying to take the advice and kind of move over towards results and outcomes. But after I changed my website, I'm actually getting fewer leads than before. What's going on? So today let's take a look at that because I have some actual examples from some of these sites that I've reviewed to share with you. So we can kind of take a look at what's, what's kind of going wrong. And then we'll take a look at a formula, like, this, like the theory behind it on like how to fix it. And then I'll show you some real world examples of actual headlines and copy that converts a lot better, especially when you're talking about results and outcomes. And at the end of it, hopefully everything will kind of be back on track and you'll be getting more leads, higher prices, better clients, because you're talking about how you help people and why it works. So the, the headlines that tend to backfire are the ones that I refer to as like cotton candy promises or like cotton candy headlines. And what I mean by that, it's like it's big, it looks big, it looks sweet, but when you actually get there, it just dissolves out into nothing because there's, there's really no substance behind it. And some examples of that are, and like these are actual real examples from actual websites that I've been reviewing. I'll just read through a, a couple of them, then we'll talk about them all together as a chunk. But like, for example, let's grow your business or you need a website that converts or we build websites with a positive ROI. Your website should work for you. Build, scale, and expand. Like these are all headlines that I refer to as cotton candy headlines because it sounds big and sweet and great, but then there's no substance. It just dissolves down into, no into nothing because there's no context. There's no, there's like, it, it doesn't feel believable. And if it's not believable, that's why it backfires. Because what people are looking at, like a client will come to the site and, and read a headline like that, and it says, you need a website that converts or you need positive ROI. And, and they're thinking, well, I don't believe you. Like, I, I don't believe that you know how to get positive ROI on my website because you don't even know who I am, right? The, the, the promise is just too broad and too generic to be true. And if somebody's first impression of your business is, I don't believe you, then you don't really get the clients that you want. Like, like that doesn't convert as well, even compared to a site that's more of like a catalog of services. Because at least if you're saying, hey, I could give you a website, a logo, whatever, people believe that they can hire you and get a website, a logo, or whatever, right? It's like, as long as you're saying what you're gonna get, people generally believe that. But if you have a, have a promise that's just too broad or too generic or just too big to be true, then at least at a subconscious level, if not even more forthcoming than that, people are thinking, well, I don't, I don't believe it. And if they don't believe it, then they're not likely to take your call to action, then you'll get fewer conversions than even if you didn't switch to the results. So here, there's a couple of things that you can do to fix it. So there's a three-step formula that I use to really dial in copy on your site that converts with regard to web design and digital marketing. And there's three questions that you wanna answer, especially like when writing a headline. You definitely wanna hit on the first two. The third one is kind of optional, but if you can get all three, you've got like a killer headline. So here's what it is. The first question that you want your headline to answer is like, who specifically is this for? So, some, so you can't just say nonprofits or small business. It's like, it needs to be more specific on who it's for. What is the outcome that you're offering, especially if it's something that's tangible and measurable, not just, a, not just an emotional outcome. And then the third one is why does it work? And you can take two angles on the why does it work one. So one angle is why does it work in terms of what are you going to do for the client so that they believe, oh yeah, if we did that, then that would work. The other approach would be, what does the client either have to do or not have to do that they think they might otherwise would have to? And then that creates this curiosity hook of like, oh, that's really interesting. I thought I would have to do this thing, but I don't. And how does that work? And so then they keep reading the page, right? So like the whole idea is to create something that's interesting enough for people to believe it and, and keep reading the page so that when you present your call to action, they take it, right? Okay, so, those, so that's kind of the theory behind it. And let's do a couple of examples. I'll do like four or five examples. Uh, the first couple of ones will be where that third question is stuff that you do. And then the other, after that, we'll do some curiosity hook, uh, like where the third part, the third question is kind of stuff that the client's responsible for, or maybe not responsible for. Okay, so here's an example. Done for you lead generation for home service businesses. That would be a great headline because here's the three things. The target is home service businesses. The outcome is lead generation. And the method, which is like, why does it work? It's because it's done for you, right? So like, 
that's enough for me to think, oh, that's pretty interesting. Done for you, lead generation for home service businesses. If I'm a home service business, I want lead generation and someone's gonna do it for me. I'm interested enough to keep reading, right? So that would be a great headline. Here's a second one. Home service businesses triple their revenue with our subscription model service. And so then you're thinking, okay, well, here's it is. Target market, home service businesses, outcome, triple your revenue, method, selling subscriptions rather than one-off projects. And maybe what you're thinking is you can help people that would traditionally do something that would be like a one and done project, but convert that into more of a subscription model for their business. So they have more recurring revenue. They don't need as many clients. They have a kind of a, like a client base that sort of snowballs. So what if that was your offer? That would be a really good headline for that. And both of those are examples of things that you do that would make people believe that, okay, like if I were doing that, that sounds pretty interesting. I think that would work. And now you've got context and substance and it means something and it's not this cotton candy fluff. It's actually meaningful stuff. So, um, so let's take a look at the other side now. Like what happens if you do that third thing about the method, but it's in the context of the client's paradigm. Here's an example of that. Double your test drives without needing more leads. Okay, so that's a cool that's a cool headline because of the we got three the three things going. The target is auto dealerships, right? And it's kind of an implied target. You don't say auto dealerships or car dealerships in the headline, but you think, well, who needs test drives? Well, car dealerships, like you, you take your car on a test drive, so like it implies the target. And even by using industry specific language, which makes you seem more like an insider in that space. So target audience is, is dialed in. The outcome is you get more test drives. And the method, which is kind of this curiosity hook, is without needing more leads. It's like, well, how do I get more test drives if more people aren't coming to the site or more people aren't coming to our kind of coming into our flow of, of, of client acquisition? And then you might think, well, the way that we do that is we just do better with email marketing and drip campaigns and 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 lead follow-up and lead nurturing. And so like maybe you've got some kind of a sequence to optimize the effectiveness of what happens after they connect with the client for the first time, and that can boost their test drives. So that would be a really good headline for a solution sort of like that. Here's another one. Six-figure blueprint for home-based portrait photographers. So target market, portrait photographers, outcome, six-figure business model, so they're making six figures, and the method is working from home, like you don't even need a studio. And so if you were doing something like that, that kind of makes me think, well, how do, I, how do I make six figures working out of my house with a camera? And I'm gonna keep reading on that if I'm a portrait photographer. Let's do one more. This is a little bit different because it's more of a niche of like e-commerce, which we don't oftentimes talk about. So I thought I'd throw one in for that. What if you had a headline, like say maybe you work with Shopify sites or something, you could do a headline like, boost your Shopify revenue without increasing your ad spend. And maybe what you're thinking is you can optimize the checkout so you have higher conversions on that and do cart abandonment and product upsells and cross sells. So you're taking the traffic they already have and then just getting better conversions and, and, and higher cart values and things from the traffic that they already have. And so now I'm thinking, oh, wow, that's pretty interesting. How does that work, right? Because like the, the idea that we're trying to trigger in people's minds is, well, how does that work? Or, or tell me more, that's really interesting. And then they keep going down your page and learning more about your offer and why it works for them. So that when you present the call to action, they're like, that's pretty cool. And they take it and they hop on the phone and now you've got a lead. So, well, what about the rest of the page? Like, what do you say on the rest of the page? This is something we spend a lot of time working with in Blue Theory, which is a, which is a coaching community for web designers who want to land more consistent leads at higher prices. I'll put a link in the description to Blue Theory. You can check it out. It's awesome. I actually have a bunch of guarantees that you'll actually grow your business if you join the community, so check that out. But um, if you wanna learn a little bit more about why it's so hard to get leads now and why it's important to shift towards results rather than just a catalog of services, check out this next video because you're not actually competing against who it seems like you're competing against. Check this out and I'll show you all the details.